Welcome to the lecture on Sustainable Digital and Urban Infrastructure. Hi, my name is Daniel Benavides. I am a professor at the Colombian School of Engineering. I am here to present an overview of new concepts, ideas, and trends on digital and urban infrastructure for smart, sustainable cities. This lecture has been developed by the project CAF for City, Strengthening Governance Capacity for Smart, Sustainable Cities. The project is co-founded by the Erasmus Plus program of the European Union. The world's population is growing rapidly. By 2050, the total world population will be 9.7 billion and 68% will live in a city. Dealing with such an increase in population presents a complex challenge to city planners and city managers. Cities will face several problems, including an increasing demand for water and energy, the need for efficient waste management, the scalability of transportation systems, climate change, and the uncontrolled growth of slums in developing countries. Cities' infrastructure will be tested to their limits, and they must be planned to cope with these problems, not at any cost, but efficiently and cheaply. However, city managers must consider not only the efficiency of the city and its infrastructure, but also its sustainability. The emergence of complex human behaviors, leverage on technology, and the well-being of their citizens. Even though people are the fundamental component of cities, traditionally, the city infrastructure has been modeled in a reductionist way. Traditionally, anthropological forces have been ignored and the urban infrastructure of a city has been considered as the union of several physical subsystems. Thus, the term urban infrastructure has been used to refer almost exclusively to physical infrastructures such as those for energy, transportation, water, and waste disposal. Only lately, Human considerations such as citizens' well-being have been addressed seriously in urban infrastructure planning. However, we think that this still presents an incomplete view, and we argue that urban infrastructure planning must also consider the emergence of complex human behaviors. Thus, we say that we should repurpose the main objective of urban infrastructure and cities themselves from physical places for large human settlements into centers of knowledge creation. This simple idea, namely the idea of considering knowledge creation as the primary purpose of cities, has profound implications on how cities and their infrastructure are conceived and designed. This overview will explore several of these implications and its relationship with traditional urban infrastructure components. Concretely, we will introduce the concepts of planning for unsustainability, digital and communication infrastructure, water and waste management, energy, housing, transportation and public spaces, and infrastructure for knowledge creation. What we mean by planning for unsustainability? Good resource management as the sustainability objective is an incomplete view of sustainability. Achieving a state where cities do not generate problems is just an utopia. Achieving a state where humanity has no problems is also an utopia, a dangerous one. As the physicist David Deutsch tells us, problems are inevitable but with the right knowledge, they are also solvable. Aspiring to, ha aspiring to have a static society where all problems are solved in fo uh, is false and morally wrong. We can plan solutions for the problems that we know we have. We can envisage sustainable solutions for those problems, but we can't have plans for the problems that we don't know, know yet that we have or will have. To cope 
With those unforeseeable problems, we must plan institutions to foster knowledge creation. Those institutions include institutions for government, institutions for education, institutions for research, institutions for economy, and institutions for urban infrastructure management. We should aspire to have dynamic societies prepared prepare to create knowledge rapidly to solve unexpected problems. Urban infrastructure is part of the solutions we have, and it poses several problems itself. We must solve the problems we know we have, and we need to make plans to cope with those problems. But we also need the strong institutions to cope with the problems we don't know yet that we have. Those institutions can be planned. Planning them requires, requires a shift in the way we think. We need to prepare city managers and designers to understand the best explanations of knowledge creation, science, and philosophy. We need them to plan for unsustainability of the solutions we create to solve our current problems. Each new solution creates new problems. Let's start with digital and communication infrastructure. Communicating ideas is a requirement to address problems, conjecture solution, and test explanations collectively. Our species ecological niche, namely solving problems through good explanations, depends on the amount of information we can create, store, and communicate. We refer to this amount of information as bandwidth. Thus, there is a natural need in human affairs for the improvement of communication bandwidth. Language may be the first human invention that improved communication bandwidth enough to have a noticeable impact on people's number of explanations. Cities may be the second one. After cities, Many other inventions noticeably improved communication bandwidth. Writing, the printing press, the telegraph, the telephone, radio communications are some of those inventions, just to mention a few. Today, digital communication, computers, mobile phones, and the internet are examples of technologies that vastly enhance humanity's bandwidth capacity. The democratization of communication and digital infrastructures affect the intellectual and economic development of citizens. Planning the growth of communication infrastructure is an essential step in designing sustainable cities. A city planner must know how to face the development of the abstract infrastructures that are built on top of the telecommunications infrastructure. Understanding the relationship between these two layers of infrastructure is vital to, the plan, to plan the institutions that will shape the future of smart cities. Let's pass to water and waste management. Densification in cities is seen by many as the, an opportunity for economic and social growth, but it also represents a remarkably high pressure on the environment and particularly on water. According to the World Economic Forum, droughts and urban floods pose the highest risk for the next two decades of the expected global impact. An international study recently showed that one, of, one in every four cities experienced this hydric phenomena at, and that climate change and urbanization will increase the risk of lack of water in the basins of periurban rivers. Big and small cities around the world face a daily challenge related to water use and management. City planners will face at least the following three challenges related to water. How to provide citizens with water, technically called aqueduct system, how to manage rainwater, technically called hydrology and urban drainage, 
And three, how to dispose wastewater, technically called the sewage systems. Regarding energy, the creation of knowledge requires energy. People will increase the demand for energy and cities must provide this energy efficiently and cheaply. As society demands for greener energetic solutions increases, and as the demand for fossil fuel decreases, new alternative energy technologies are being deployed and tested. Solar farms, wind generators, smart grids, nuclear power, smart metering, smart buildings, and e-mobility are examples of these technologies. However, cities must solve the problem of how to deploy these new technologies and how to create the moral and legal knowledge necessary to manage them, for example, in the controversial case of nuclear power. Housing. Cities have broadened their smart vision towards a more holistic perspective, including human concerns such as quality of life. Rather than merely focusing on connected infrastructure, Smart city managers are looking for innovative tools and technologies to make housing more affordable while meeting citizens' expectations. To meet the expectations and standards of construction in a smart city while being economically, socially, and environmentally sustainable, eight trends are impacting the industry. These trends are building information modeling, standardization, information systems, virtual reality, modular construction, sustainable construction, automation, and robotization in construction, and finally, innovative materials. What about transportation and public spaces? Land use regulation and mobility are vital for local governments in smart cities. Transport infrastructure and public space have a strong relationship and together have shaped the urban landscape. Urban mobility reform remains one of the most significant challenges policymakers face worldwide. Congestion, road accidents, and high pollution rates result from the high demand for community commuting in the city. To solve these problems, it is necessary to integrate information technologies with city management. Emerging technologies have helped alleviate these problems. However, there is still plenty of space for improvement. To connect cities with the smart transportation systems, it is necessary to review the concept of smart mobility, which is nothing more than redefining how we move. Public spaces, is another essential component of smart cities. It brings people together to socialize, recreate, and work. Primarily, it attracts people to the city. It allows people to build relationships and exports innovation and new ideas that fuel a city's economic growth. When it comes to public spaces, we think of parks, squares, and green areas often forgetting streets, which collectively are usually the largest public space in cities. How streets are used for the movement of people or vehicles will define the environment around them. Infrastructure for knowledge creation. As mentioned before, knowledge creation is the fundamental purpose of cities and the need for knowledge creation will define how the infrastructure and the institutions to manage this infrastructure are designed, implemented, and evolved. These institutions must be designed by adopting the best practices in knowledge management. In other words, by providing these institutions with a tradition of criticism and error correction. Smart cities will then benefit from the implicit embedded knowledge and will evolve into mature institutions. In some sense, 
We recognize the role of cities as centers of knowledge creation and embrace the emergence of new knowledge from people's collaboration, leverage on top of digital and urban infrastructure. The team of the project CAF for City thanks you for listening. We are sure you will benefit from the ideas and subjects discussed here. Thank you.